So systemic mastocytosis is a very rare disease um, that is often difficult to diagnose and patients can present with a variety of presentations and symptoms um, and abnormalities. Uh, but once patients are diagnosed, um, you know, they, those patients that have more advanced diseases um, based on WHO definitions of systemic mastocytosis. So for example, patients with um, aggressive systemic mastocytosis or um, mast cell leukemia or systemic mastocytosis that associated with another um, hematopoietic disorder. Um, so for those patients um, that have disease-related complications, um, and they're defined um, really as C findings. So when their disease affects their organ function uh, as either cytopenias, um, splenomegaly or hepatomegaly causing um, hepatic dysfunction, for example, um, and cytopenia is related to splenomegaly. Um, liver disease such as cirrhosis and, and resulting fluid retention in the situs, significant lymphadenopathy, um, difficulties um, with um, nutrient absorption um, because of the GI tract involvement by systemic mastocytosis. Um, those patients uh, now have um, potentially multiple drugs available for their use. So um, in the past few years, we have had mitostorin, um, which is a kit um, inhibitor. Um, that has been used to treat these patients with systemic mastocytosis with more aggressive disease phenotypes. Um, and um, patients, um, it has been shown to improve, um, improve all of these disease-related categories in, in many patients. Um, however, some of the patients either don't respond to mitostorin or um, don't tolerate it. Uh, because of some of the potential GI side effects. Um, and um, in the recent months, another um, kid inhibitor has been approved by the FDA for treatment of this disease, and it's um, called avapritinib. Um, and it really gives another option for patients with systemic mastocytosis. Um, it, it is more specific kid inhibitor, compared to mitostorin, and so expect it to be more effective um, and potentially can be used as a first-line treatment for those patients that have systemic mastocytosis with C findings and debilitating symptoms uh, of, and debilitated disease burden. Um, and what has been shown so far is that um, it it has a great effect on um, mast cell burden in the bone marrow and potentially in other organs that are involved, resulting in improvements in um, all of the disease-related symptoms, such as cytopenias, uh, lymphadenopathy, um, um, and other issues that these patients experience. And in addition, there is reduction um, in the, in the sick kit, um, allele frequency that is seen with treatment of this disease. So potentially some disease modifying effects um, are seen by using this drug. Um, and so for those patients that happen to have this rare disease, um, there are now two potential options that are available in addition to some of the older drugs that we have been using um, to treat these diseases historically, such as uh, prednisone, hydroxyurea, interference, and such. Uh, there are more specific drugs available now, uh, which is um, very exciting, I think, for both physicians treating these patients and for uh, patients that have this disease. Um, additional, even more specific uh, compounds are um, entering clinical trials right now. And then, um, as with other hematologic malignancies, uh, combination strategies will also be attempted for example, with using um, abapritinib with um, hypomethylating agent, this would be one example of a combination uh, that we will see being explored in the future.